the other periods that I swapped and we weren't into our classroom. So we didn't get very far necessarily with the notes. But one thing we said is if you find a weird scientific name, weird, funny, unusual, based on something else, bring it in for a germ. And we said you can do it Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday. Or this is the genus. Um, here's a ba humbug, a snail from Fiji Island. Ba humbug. Ba humbug. I'll write these up. Um, Agravation, which oh, is a beetle. Agra is the genus name, and Vation is the, the species name. Um, Abra cadabra is a clam. And then there's a Leonardo da Vinci, which is a moth, which is pretty interesting. Um, so Wesley, and you follow certain endings. Um, when you actually name bacteria, it's a living organism. We talked about on Friday the difference between prokaryotes and eukaryotic cells. The prokaryotes were bacteria. So we would name them the same way. You've got your genus name, which is capitalized. The species name is all lowercase and it's underlined. If we were typing this, what would we do instead? Uh, italicized. When you are writing for me, though, like when we're doing our lab reports on staff or on E. coli, definitely underline it. Some people try to make their letters look slanted, and that doesn't always quite work, so make sure you underline it. We are going through and naming bacteria and classifying it in general. Um, one big thing you can do right off the bat to make two different big groups is the gram stain, which we'll do in a couple weeks, probably like four weeks or so. The gram stain is based on the fact that bacteria cell walls have that thick substance inside, so it's the P cell wall of bacteria is made of a substance called cell wall material pep peptidoglycan. So peptidoglycan is the cell wall material. If you stain bacteria and it has a thick, thick peptidoglycan, it's going to stain purple and we call it gram positive. If it has a thin layer, we call it gram negative and it stains more of a red color. So this is how we get a big, different classification. Then we can go through and keep narrowing and narrowing until down at the very end, all we have is names of actual species. There's nothing else kind of in the same group as him that has all the same traits. So cellular shape, bacillus or caucus bacillus was a rod shaped, caucus is a circle. circle or a round. So we can go through and we can look at catalases. Do they use a catalase to help break down? From chemistry, what's a catalase? speeds up a reaction without harming it or altering it in any way. So you can speed up the reaction with catalase. Sometimes they don't accept catalase and there's nothing that can be added for them to speed up their growth, speed up how they metabolize their food. So once we go down here, we can isolate it. Enterococcus fecalis. Often the names give a hint about what they mean. Not that you have to know the name of this guy, but what do you think? Enterococcus fecalis, what could that be? Where would we find it? Poop. Yeah, so in <laughs> intestinal material, an enterococcus, what shape? Circle yeah, circle shape. So fecalis and entero both kind of give you a sign. It's like an intestinal bacteria on these. A lot of these are named in a certain way that makes sense. Chromobacterium violatium. How does that make sense? Violet. It's a deep purple as it grows. That makes sense. This guy we're actually going to use in a lab coming up, and it does look red. I'll, I can bring in my E. coli and um, my other bacteria and show you this one, and he's going to he's going to like grow in a red color. This one, if they don't use glucose as an energy short source, this one is Pseudomonas fluorescens. What do you think it does according to the name? Yeah, fluoresces. It actually grows with sort of a yellow tint to it. Um, and then we can keep going if it's off-white. Can it move? Can it not move? E. coli, definitely according to our E. coli on the ceiling back there, it's got flagella. So it makes it easier to move. This side, if we look at other things, if we look at the fact we can separate them into different groups. So that is one way to classify. Another way is a dichotomous key. Do you guys remember when you were little? Um, there are books that you can read where you get to the end of a chapter and you can choose the route you yeah. want to go. Love this. Actually, response is that? Yeah. Okay, so you would read the book and, and it would say, um, if you want him to be rescued, go to this chapter, this page. 
if you want him to face more danger, then go to this page. You kind of separate and you can choose your own ways. So quickly on this worksheet, go through a dichotomous key, pick an organism. You don't have to start with this guy. You know, if you were in the field and this is the first one you'd see, then you'd pick him and go through the steps. So go through the steps. It's amazing. <laughs> oh yeah, by the way, I do have one more sign to begin. Or is A the sub a zero? See backwards there, the same. Oh. That is a scientific name, so okay. um, if you want to give me a germ for that. one's ears are rounded, some people might think it's pointed. So the point of the key is go through and figure out based on how you see this organism, find out which route you would go and name it that way. We may actually have different names. Um, when I was working in Hawaii, we spent some time mist netting, which is um, capturing birds. There's a really, really thin net. I mean, you can't even see it when it's kind of hoisted up in between two poles. But really thin net, and they would bring it up kind of at the tree line. And every time the bird would fly into it, it would get trapped, and then it would fall down into a little pocket. So it would stay there. And then you would lower the net, you would take the bird out, and you would go through a key and try to identify things. The problem would be it's moving. It could be one of several species, and you might only have a key that goes with one species, but another bird that's similar in appearance. Um, but we would go through things like the first question would be about beak length, and we would take a little um, metric ruler and we would measure the beak. And if it was longer than so and so centimeters, then go to question number two. If it was shorter, go to the next one. Um, there are measuring differences that could change from person to person if there are errors. Um, we would take the wing and hold it up and separate the feathers and look at things like if the tips are light, then it's a juvenile and it would estimate an age for you. But, you know, there are genetic differences in birds, so that could affect it. So, anyway, um, there are differences and some problems with these. And then the other thing, too, that Sydney said was, this isn't following a scientific name type of route. They're just giving you a name. So, technically, if the first one is Beverless, that's what I got, um, it should say maybe Beverless uh, Red. Gnomus. Yeah, Gnomus. Beverless Gnomus. And then the N for Gnomus would be in lowercase. First one I got Beverless. Okay, next thing is not easy at all. When I did this last year, I wasn't sure that it could be done. So I just gave it to the students and looked to see what they could do, and it worked out. It's usually about 23 statements. Get in groups of three, two, four, you decide. You need one sheet of paper, and you need a pack of these organisms. For microbiology, we'll use these, we'll call them germs. You and your partners need to make a key. What I would do is at first make two piles. So figure out, you know, when you're looking at all these cards, what is one distinction that makes this group totally different than this group? Just two different groups. Um, maybe I would say all those. Everybody understand? Yep. Any questions? It usually takes about 23 statements, but you could do it in a different way, and it might be different. The very first group to finish, call me over, and I will choose one of your guys, and if I can go through it and it is correct, and when I went through the steps of your key, I could name it, and it was the right thing, then I'll give them all a germ. The first and one, otherwise, yes, we'll all do one better. So, once you know your groups, come up and grab your
Yeah, zero, one, two, six. Sorry, I'm going too fast. I guess it does. I don't know. Okay. Like it. For zero, do one M. Like the Just keep going. She's <laughs> 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 Oh, this is a short chair. All right. All right. So, what group are you guys putting up to? What what type of shape? Head we could do hairy and not hairy. So okay. Wait. 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 There's number one. Number one is. Like, you need to name some of these things. You know, is it a heart? Is it a spine? <laughs> From here, we need to find. Okay, do you shape the bottom? Okay, so. Do you A lot of people, they each use different categories, but it pretty much that worked out to be about 23 statements or so. One grew. Kelsey, Emily, and Bradley did 17 statements. So that I haven't seen before. And what they did was they combined several things in one. So technically, if that icon was key, there are, if for each statement, two choices. They had some that they actually went to three. So they cheated. Awesome. They cheated. Well, but it is a key that works. So, for example, number six. Number six, they had several things all combined. Um, it looks like they went to shape of head, number of eyes, antenna, if it has a mouth or not, if it has spikes. And then number six has spikes on body, it's one E. If they don't, it's one D. If the spikes are on the face, it's one U. If it's around the outside of the face, it's one B. So that is a way to kind of combine a lot of traits in one. Um, another thing, too, that's different is Sydney decided to draw it out in a chart first. So kind of like what we did here. She did that. She had spikes, no spikes. She went through and she branched it off so that it would narrow down as she went. And at the bottom, she only has the organism. And then also what helped is instead of a long description, she had a diagram. Like um, this is the bottom of the appendages. This is what the antenna are like. So do they have antenna or not? Then, then she's going to make it her that cut this piece. So different ways to do it. You'll see what it is on your test. Maybe I should have you make one on your test. Oh, thank you. No, not that long. Yeah. These are hard. These are really like, hard. like seven. Yeah, like seven stuff.